Number 30. A rugby player passes the ball seven meters across the field where it is caught at the same height as it left his hand. At what angle was the ball thrown if its initial speed was 12 meters per second, assuming that the smaller of the two possible angles was used? All right. So for letter A, let's just draw a quick picture. So let's say this point will represent uh, the ball. Let me just draw, actually first, let me draw a x-axis straight line. Now let's say that this ball, this dot represents the ball. And this ball is going to be launched with a certain initial velocity. And they told us what that initial velocity is. They said that the initial velocity will be 12.0. Uh, so 12.0 meters per second. And it's lost at, launched at some angle. I don't know what that angle is, but they apparently tell me that there could be two. Okay, um, so that's what we're looking for. The ball will take a certain path, right? It'll look something like this, etc. Then it's going to hit the ground at the same height as which, it, as which it started. And they also told us that the distance between the start and the end point, right? That distance in there is going to be 7.00 meters. That's known as the range. All right and specifically the range of x. Now it almost seems like we don't have enough information to solve this question, but we actually do. Take a look at the formula on the right. I'm gonna box it. This formula tells us that if we know the range and the initial velocity, um, we can solve then for the initial angle uh, because I know uh, what the value of g is. So I have all my uh, variables that I need. So let's write that formula out. So we get the range of x, is equal to the initial velocity squared times the sine of two theta. That's all in parentheses there divided by g. So let's plug in what we know. The range is seven. The initial velocity was 12 meters per second. That's gonna be squared times the sine of two times my initial angle. Great, divided by now 9.80. So let's cross multiply. So take seven and multiply it by 9.8. We get a value of 68.6. 68.6 is equal to 12 squared, which is 144, times the sine of 2 theta. Now divide out the 144. Divide out the 144. So now sine of 2 theta is going to be equal to 68.6 divided by 144. And we get a value of 0.476. So 0 0.476. Now, this is the point in which um, I can explain why we have two answers. So remember the graph of sine, I'm gonna draw it here, okay? Remember that sine has a lot of symmetry in it, right? And it has this wave-like property. So remember that where crosses here, this is, I'm gonna do this in degrees. I could do it in radians too, but let's just do it in degrees. So that point is 180. This value here would be 360. Right, the halfway point here would be 90, right? In which case this side is symmetric with that side. Now, let's say that I plot my value of, so this is the point at which uh, I would be plotting this number. So that number, let's say, appears to be right about here. So 0 0.476. And notice that if I dash a line on over, there's gonna be two points in which it crosses the graph, right there and right there. Now what that means is that these two points correlate with two angles. I'll call this angle one, and then this one will be angle two, all right? Now remember that there's symmetry here, so if I were to dot a line straight on down, right, if I found the distance between the origin and theta one, that would be the same, although it doesn't appear in my picture because it's not to scale, but that would be the same as this distance from 180 to theta two. And that's what we're doing right now. Once I do the inverse sign here, what I'm finding is I'm finding this theta one and theta two, essentially, okay? So let's do that. So in your calculator, do second sign of 0.476. The value comes out to be 28.4. So now we have two theta is equal to 28.4, okay. Now this obviously isn't the theta value yet, it's two theta, but once we do the inverse sine, we find this distance that I just described before. So this value here is 28.4.
And if you notice over here, right, that would be the, uh, the angle one measure, but remember it's two times that angle measure, but that would be essentially the angle one measure. And then this distance over here would also be the same, right, of 28.4. Now if you think about it, if I know that this point right here is 180, and then I moved to the left 28.4 units, right? I moved to the left 28.4 units. Could I find my theta two? Of course, right? I would just have to subtract. So this is one case, not an answer yet, but that's one case. And then the second case would be two theta is equal to now 180 minus 28.4. So 180 minus 28.4, that comes out to 151.6. 150, I'll just do 152. Now divide both sides by two, and finally we'll get our actual theta value, 28.4 over two. So this comes out to 14.2. And then divide this by two. So now my theta becomes 152 over two. So it comes out to about 76, right? 76. And again, I had to round a little bit because of significant figures and whatnot. But these would be the two angles. Now notice what's interesting here. Approximately, again, I had to round because of sig figs, but if you take 14.2 and add it to 76, what do you get? Right, you get 90, right? Or thereabout. Remember, it's a little off because I had to round, but you get 90. So there's another shortcut too. What you could have done is just solved for this angle right here, 14.2, and then simply subtracted that from 90 to find your other angle. It doesn't matter, they both work out. I think though this explanation makes a little more intuitive sense but that might just be me. So we found the two angles. Now um, it says, assuming that we take the smaller of the two, what's the answer? Well, obviously now this would be the answer to letter A, right? That's the answer. Okay, so now letter B says, what other angle gives the same range? Well, we just found it, right? 76 degrees. Um, and why wouldn't it be used? Let me just put my degree signs up there. Why wouldn't it be used? Well, think about if you're playing rugby. Do you want to throw a high pass, right? Do you want this angle, go take a look at the picture in the middle page. Do you want this angle to be high? No, right? You'd want a nice low pass, a nice low angle here, rather than some high angle because you'd increase the chance for an, uh, an interception, right? So you don't want that to occur. So we'll keep the angle nice and low. That's why we're not, that's why it's not going to be used. And now, um, and the reason why it would increase the likelihood of an interception is because it would take longer, right? So now we can solve for the, how long does the pass take? All right, so let's think about how to answer now letter C. Let's do the work over here, letter C. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, draw a coordinate system here. I'm going to now uh, plot my uh, initial velocity vector. Okay, remember that the initial velocity vector is here. Okay, I can draw it a little more accurately since I do know the theta. So the theta here uh, should be 14.2 degrees, right? My initial velocity was 12. Okay, now what I can do is break this up into components. And the reason why I have to do that is because I need to find the time and the only distance I know is the range in the x direction. Therefore, I need to find the initial velocity in that x direction, okay? Just for completeness sake, I'll complete the triangle here. That red line now would represent the initial velocity, obviously, in the y direction. But we're gonna focus on calculating this. So how do we do it? Well, we know the hypotenuse, we know this angle, and we're looking for the side adjacent to that angle, therefore we're gonna use cosine. So cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Cosine of 14.2 uh, degrees is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction divided by 12.0. So now, let me just put it over here. The initial velocity in the x direction should simply be cosine of 14.2 times 12. And we get a value of about 11.6, right? So 11.6, that's meters per second. That's in the x direction. Now what I can do is just do, uh, no, there's no acceleration, by the way, in the x direction, right? The only acceleration since the ball is essentially in free fall will be in the y direction. So knowing that there's no ac uh, acceleration present, what I can do is I can use my simple formula, velocity is equal to displacement over time, right? 
So more specifically, I can say that uh, this is really average velocity, right? But there is no change in the velocity. The initial is the same as the final because there is no acceleration. And therefore, um, I can just say that the initial, uh, ex uh, excuse me, initial velocity in the x direction is equal to the average velocity, right? So this is 11.6. The displacement in the x direction was my range, right? Seven meters and then times time. So just do a little cross multiplication. So it's now seven divided by 11.6. So seven divided by 11.6. And we get a time value of 0 0.603 seconds. Okay. If you were to use the other angle of 76 degrees, you'd realize that the time would have been a lot longer. All right. So thank you guys for tuning in. Hope this helped. And please remember to hit that subscribe button. Thank you.